Hello, my name is Dr. Seth Jenny, and today I'm going to be talking with you about what is a journal article and what are the components of a journal article. So we're talking about peer-reviewed journal articles in professional journals, and here you can see major structure components of a journal article. Title page, abstract, I'll go more detail into all of these in a sec. Introduction, uh, in a type of thesis or dissertation, this might be broken up into chapters one and two for the introduction and then a literature review. In a professional journal article, um, those are combined and shortened significantly, thank goodness. Uh, then we could talk about the, uh, move into the methods, um, how the study was conducted, who was involved in the study, um, what the procedures were, the results, where you'll see the data, the discussion, uh, where the data is discussed in relation to the past literature, past studies, the conclusion, sometimes you'll see acknowledgments, not always, certainly references, um, and that would be the reference list, uh, sometimes called the bibliography. And uh, if not embedded within the journal article, um, you might see at the end tables and figures. So that's the main pieces to a journal article. Let me close that tab. All right. I'm going to show you an actual journal article in a second, but um, here's the, th the questions by Kasdan had for if you were to write a journal article, did you answer these questions within each of these sections? So from our perspective, what we might look at is, is um, the quality of, of the article that we're reviewing, did they answer in the abstract? Is the main purpose of the study listed? Who was studied? What's the sample? Who were the participants? Um, what conditions were they uh, exposed to? So if this is experimental research, we really want it to be very clear what's the independent variable, what's being manipulated, and what's the dependent variable, um, what was measured, the type of design, and then conclusions um, for that. Maybe the significance of the, of the study as well. But most of the time, those um, anywhere from 50 words to 200 words typically. Then the introduction. The introduction is why was this study performed? What's the justification of the study? Um, so in the introduction, you need to lay the groundwork for um, what's the background of what we currently know about your topic. Um, what's the current theory, the research, primary research articles, um, secondary sources that relate to your topic. Um, and then what is the main purpose of the study is typically at the end of the introduction. Um, right before the purpose statement, a lot of times you'll see is the problem statement. What that is is um, uh, w the justification for why or a gap in the literature exists. This, the purpose of this study is to find out that gap. All right, and then a lot of times an introduction will finish with the uh, this study is significant or important because fill in the blank. Then you're going to move into methods. Uh, you're going to talk about, sometimes it will start with the, the design of the study um, and then uh, it might move into the sampling, the participants, who were they, uh, moving into the reporting of the demographics. So this might be the first spot. If not, um, in the introduction you might see a table which talks about the uh, the demographics of the participants. So we're talking about the characteristics of the participants, um, their age, maybe their gender, um, maybe their race, uh, and then specific characteristics relating to what you're studying. Um, how were they recruited is also very important. Uh, so then uh, talking about the design. So um, then a lot of times you'll see in the method section, uh, you might have equipment, you might have instrumentation. Um, this is what, you know, Kasdan lists as assessment. Um, what were the measures? 
and then certainly you're going to have the procedures. So in the instrumentation, in the equipment, you're going to describe what the instruments are in the equipment, what they are, what they do. In the procedures, you would be listing how those were used. All right. And so this would be the procedures. Um, you know, was it two weeks of exposure to the certain treatment? Um, what's the order? All of the types of things that occurred during the study. And then lastly, um, well, I'm sorry, not lastly, uh, after the methods would be the results. This is where the data is presented. All right. Um, if it's quantitative, this is typically going to be some types of tables and charts and figures uh, representing the quantitative data. Um, if it's qualitative, you may have um, some tables relating to um, the codes that were found uh, and the themes that were generated based upon uh, the, the, the data that was collected. All right, so um, those are the types of things that you'll see in the results section. Um, but it is only presenting the results in this section. You are not discussing what, um, uh, in relation to the past literature and the past studies, and that is what happens in the discussion section. So the results is the presentation of the data that was found. Um, and and th all of these things need to center on what is the main purpose of the study and then typically the purpose statement is going to be rephrased into research questions and if it's a quantitative study they'll also sometimes have um, hypotheses and an you know alternative and a null hypothesis but um, remember at any time that you are writing and or reading these uh, a study you are going to be always coming back to what was the purpose of the study so this result section is going to relate back to um, the purpose of the study and the research question or questions. And then the discussion is going to embed the current study's results into the past research that has been done relating to that topic. And um, typically we'll have discussion in relation to a theoretical underpinning within that. Um, other sections that Kasdan does not list here would be the conclusion, and a conclusion is um, a final summary, um, but it should not be the exact same as the abstract at the beginning. Uh, it it may call for um, some in here somewhere in here they should be listing uh, the typically before the conclusion. Um, or in the, dis in the discussion section, the limitations of the study, what are the threats to internal and external validity, uh, and then um, future research, what are the authors providing as recommendations for future research, um, which may or may not relate to the results that they found. Um, after the conclusion, you would have the uh, references, and then if not embedded in the main body of the study, um, you would have the um, tables and figures or appendices for that.